In late 2017, a logger near an abandoned research facility found a tape recorder laying on the ground deep in the woods of Maine. The contents of that tape were handed over to the Museum of Fear, a group that seeks to uncover what others wish to hide. What you are about to hear is the actual recording. No attempts to edit or otherwise alter the footage have been made. The location of the person recording this tape is unknown. I am a researcher at Mystic Hill Research Hospital. At least that's what I signed on to be. All of us did. There are 16 of us here, or there were, all recruited from the best hospitals and medical facilities in the country. Each of us experts in one niche corner of immunology or another. We signed on because we wanted to help. We were told the hospital was experiencing an outbreak of an illness that couldn't be identified and was damn near impossible to contain. All we ever wanted to do was help. I, I don't even remember how it started. It was only two weeks ago, but it feels like it could have been years. Time moves in strange ways here. We're entirely underground, you see. There's no way to put this gently. Uh, Mystic Hill exists solely to take the sickest of the sick, to try to save them, and to do research on the cadavers in the very likely event that they die. We signed on because we wanted there to be 30 fewer dead people this side of the Mississippi, but the way it's going, there might be a lot more than that. Sorry, anyway, the first day, uh, the first day we met the patients, they were suffering constantly. Screaming was almost non-stop, especially at night. Some of them had rashes covering three quarters of their bodies. Others were so weak they couldn't get out of bed. And still more had bruising like I've never seen in my life. And I spent five years as a trauma doctor. They stared at us with the kind of eyes that authors refer to as pleading. We were their last hope and they knew it. At least, um, at least that's what we thought. The fact that they all had oxygen masks on should have been our first clue. I mean, do you know how unlikely it is that 30 patients would all require oxygen? But they were so sick. So sick we didn't even think twice about it. We just drew blood and took samples and examined them and took data and got to work trying to save their lives. We weren't allowed to leave. Uh, the people who run this place said that we might um, risk exposing the outside world. Couldn't leave until we found a cure or until every last patient died. At which point we could go into quarantine and, I don't know, detox, I guess. So many things we never ask questions about. It's almost funny now. Almost. As I record this, I'm the only doctor left. They moved all the patients out four days ago. Not because they got better. No, no, no. <laughs> we're not the heroes of this story. See, the patients were moved out because they were never sick. They were actors. Yeah, that's right. Twelve days ago, we were 16 doctors strong. A dream team of sorts telling each other how awful it must be to be that sick and to feel like lab rats. <laughs> it turns out we were the rats. It wasn't until we'd been here nearly a week that we started to realize that something was wrong. All of us got sick at different intervals. Mikey was first, then Amber. Soon it was all of us. I've never had a fever like this in all my life. I've never vomited so much. The crushing stomach pain, the splitting headaches, losing clumps of hair by the fistful, I mean, all of it was awful, but it wasn't until the seizures started that things got downright terrifying. I told you I'm the last one here. I'm the last one alive, which means I watched 15 of the best damn doctors I know convulse to death after days of vomiting, nausea, skin rashes, migraines and weakness so profound, seven of the strongest people I know could quite literally not lift a finger. 
I don't know when they took out the Confederates. The, uh, the actors, you know. We all woke up one morning to find them all moved out. Rachel found the first camera. And not the ones we knew about. Not the ones pointed at the patients. No, the ones, uh, the ones pointed at us. And then all the pieces started to come together. Those oxygen masks were protecting the patients. The people who run this place only ever visited us in hazmat suits. Of course, we just thought it was because of the patients. Corporate leaders are always taking stupidly overdone measures to protect themselves against any germ or bug. Honestly, we kind of laughed at them. But now it all makes sense. <sighs> Joke's on us. We were the experiment. They poisoned the air, you see. They pumped a chemical of some kind through the vents, for all we can tell. Nerve gas, maybe? Some concoction of biological weapon we've never seen before, perhaps? At least, that's what we thought. Not that it matters. We all know better now. We were murdered. I, I want you to understand that, if there's anyone even listening to this. We were murdered. I'm sitting in the main hallway trying to document this while I still can. Trying to tell the story of what happened here before... Well, let's just say I'm very much aware that I have almost no time left. I don't even know why I'm bothering, though. They'll deny this ever happened and burn the evidence. Top secret government research facility, my ass. To be honest, I don't even know if this is Mystic Hill. Maybe we're in some bunker near Mystic Hill. Near enough that when we passed it to get here, we bought the excuse that it was a... What did they say? Oh right, a neighboring facility associated with Mystic. We were so stupid. Anyway, that's not the end of it. I said that 15 of us are dead, but it's more accurate to say that 15 of us were dead. I was uh, trying to find a way out of here, messing with the breakers, and um, as it turns out, I, I didn't have to. All the doors were set to unlock. And no, I don't mean that they'd always been unlocked. I mean, as of two days ago, they were unlocked. We tried those doors. I mean, don't you think when we all started getting sick and dying, we tried the doors? But this time, this time they were unlocked. And I was halfway through trying to figure out why when I heard it. A shuffle from the other room. A moan from the hallway. Pretty soon, six of the doctors were standing up, staggering around. And Connor, he, uh, he sniffed. Sniffed the air like he was a dog, and apparently what he smelled was me. Because he started after me. And soon the rest of them did too, and... Anyway. Long story short, the air was poisonous. That much we already knew, but now we're poisonous too. And it makes sense, really. I mean, if you're gonna start a zombie apocalypse, you have to be a sick SOB. And if you're that sick, you're gonna make sure that as many people die as possible, right? So, why not use the country's top immunologists, the people who have the best shot of stopping the virus, as your very first zombies? It's brilliant in a really screwed up way. You almost have to give them credit. Anyway, those doors are open now, which means as soon as they're done with me, as soon as they blow through the barricades I put in front of it, they'll be after you. And so will I. So if you're listening to this, we're probably nearby. And if we're not, we're coming. And you should definitely, definitely run. Thank you, lovely listener, for being here. I hope you enjoyed tonight's Raven original. If you did, be sure and like it, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you're new here to join the Conspiracy of Ravens. I'll see you next time on our next journey into the night.